Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, we are back on Mars again. And I'm going to be using the Vanguard again in this video. This is going to be another learn with me. I'm going to uh, pick up on the same ideas that I've done in a couple of these videos. Uh, going to head out to Jupiter, which I did in the uh, first learn with me but I'm going to choose a different target moon this time. Uh, a couple things to note. I've given my Olympus base a bit of a cosmetic upgrade, as you may note. It's no longer those plain white buildings, so this looks a little bit better. I'm using the date, uh, February 10th, 2013. This is the date that I found in the uh, first Learn With Me when I went to Jupiter. So I'm just going to reuse that date. No sense in taking the time to uh, go through transects and set that all up again. So we're basically ready to go. There's really no planning that has to be done here. I've only got 14 days worth of locks and the uh, main fuel tank is full, but I'm not carrying any extra fuel with me in the uh, payload compartment or cargo compartment and the reason for that is because I'm going to head to Phobos again to, to do a fuel stop I just think that's a lot more fuel efficient because when you take off from Mars uh, when you're loaded up with locks and fuel you burn through a lot of fuel just getting off the planet so let me target Phobos here in a line plane because we just want to make sure that we take off when the relative inclination is as low as it's going to get. Double check to make sure external cooling is on. It's on, so let's warp time ahead. Go a little quicker. And I know from past flights that around 11.6, and it's actually already can see there it switched to positive so it's already as low as it's going to get so it's time to go let's turn on the APU let's uh, open the hover doors switch over to attitude hold I'm gonna set this to about 60 degrees for our initial ascent up through the atmosphere Go with that. Rotation. Make sure we have rotation on. And uh, we're ready to go. So let's just hover up off the uh, landing Pausing pad here. External cooling offline. Wheels up. Gear up. Raise the landing gear. Gear up and locked. Just get ourselves level. There we are. Now let's rotate to 90. And let's just get everything leveled out. Throttle on the main engines, kill the hover, engage the attitude hold, close the hover doors, and we need to watch our relative inclination over here. That's looking better. Mach 2. And I found by getting into uh, orbit around Mars this way, you don't want to get too high before you pitch back down to level horizon. Mach three. In fact, we're just going to go we'll go with about that. Because you can see our vertical speed increases very quickly. So 
and the atmosphere of Jupiter uh, of Mars is quite thin even when you get up just a few kilometers so there's no need to climb way up before leveling out you can see our apoapsis over here I believe I can turn off the APU for now. Warning, center of gravity shift offline. Actually, I guess I do need it for the center of gravity shift. Center of gravity shift online. Go ahead and bump the uh, rotation a little bit. Mach 7. Yaw a little bit to the left there. Mock 9. Keeping an eye on the apoapsis. Mock 10. Mock 11. Yeah, I like this ascent profile a lot better than the uh, previous couple of attempts. Mach 12. Have the apoapsis coming up at a much more... Uh, much smoother rate, I guess I would say. Mach 13. And we should have a much more circular orbit by the time... by the time we're ready to kill the main engines. Mach 14. There were 200. I guess we could have leveled out a little sooner. Mock 15. And we are going to Phobos, so we don't need to worry about the apoapsis being too low. Uh, we'll go with that. Let's open the radiator. Switch over to orbit. Okay. Turn off the APU, get rid of some noise. I'm going to turn these extra HUDs off. I don't really use them. For this for this flight anyway. Now I think it actually is a little bit easier to bring the relative inclination down to zero, but I don't think it's as fuel efficient, so I'm not going to do it. I'll make it as part of the Transex plan. Uh, let's go ahead and set that Transex plan up now. Phobos. Maneuver mode on. And we need to raise the orbit out to that of Phobos, so something like that. Now we're going to bump the date forward. start there and now begin some plane change. Okay. And some more plane change. And we're going to bump that 
that date forward some more. Obviously we're just trying to get all these lines to uh, converge and get that closest approach as low as we can get it. Looks like we can take away some plane change now. We need some more prograde. Okay, that's as low as we're going to get on the plane change. Let's try just prograde one more time. We're getting to that point where we're not really getting any benefit out of the variables. So that means we'll have to add in, we'll have to make some outward as part of our plan now. Okay. That's getting as low as it's going to get right there. Now we should be able to get more benefit out of plane change. And now some more outward. And we just go back and forth between the variables here to dial it in. Not real exciting, but it's necessary to get it done. I do like to get this as low as I can get it because, you know, basically we are world we're landing on Phobos, so it has to be really close to zero here. Let's see what uh, prograde does for us at this point. We'll start there for now because we still have over 1500 seconds till the burn. So now what I'll do is warp time ahead to get closer to that point. And we're just going to skip our circularization burn altogether. And you can see the uh, time to do the burn is 300 seconds now, so we're going to go back to maneuver and do a little bit of last minute fine tuning here. A little bit of plane change. Alright, we're just going to go with that because I don't want to miss the opportunity to do this burn right now. 
Let's get rotated to that position. Which is going to be mostly programming. Now, since I didn't circularize the orbit yet, I don't have quite as much velocity as I would normally, so we're requiring a little bit more delta V. But basically, we're just combining our circularization with our plan for getting to Phobos, so it's not costing us any more fuel. We're just doing two things at once. At least I think. I don't. I don't think it would be any more efficient to circularize first and then go to Phobos if you don't have to. I just I think you're just combining them and I think it's equal. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now, warp time ahead to get to the time to do this burn. Getting really close. It's, uh Perfectly rotated and burning. As I get close to the end of the burn, <clears throat> I'm going to reduce some main engine as usual. Helps me make sure I don't get down there at the very bottom and then overshoot. See those last few digits coming down more slowly. <clears throat> There we go. Translation. And we'll go with that. All right, maneuver mode off. We're only uh, 3.8 kilometers out, according to Transex, and we can correct that as needed without even setting up another maneuver just by doing a little bit with our uh, translation thrusters. But you can see here after we perform that burn it raised our orbit on the other side as part of the plan for going out to Phobos so it took care of the circularization part of the burn for us. Okay now let me get thinking about the time when we're going to get to Phobos here. I'm going to want to use Attitude MFD. Again, I just find this works really well. I'm comfortable with it. There may be a better way to do it, but this works quite well. So we've been gone now for 39 minutes. Let's uh, go ahead and warp time ahead, get closer to Phobos. One of these days I actually want to take off from Mars and try to catch Phobos right as it's passing overhead and just go straight to it. Actually it won't be passing perfectly overhead obviously because it's out of plane but as close as you can and then just head straight to it and then do your braking burn to circularize at that point just to see how quickly you can get over there.
Okay, let's go ahead now and start working with our closest approach. It's a little bit off. So we're just going to play with translation. That's helping. And that's helping. So let's use these two. Let's see if this one... That's going the wrong way. That's helping. So we're going to use some down, some lateral, and some reverse translation. All three of these movements. Okay. And you can see just by doing it that way, we don't even have to set up a maneuver. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, now we are still 3,000 kilometers away, so let's keep moving on in. And when we get in a little closer, we'll work with translation a little bit more. About a thousand kilometers out. Let's go back to real time and translate again. That's helping. That's helping. That's worse, so let's use these three. reference Phobos now and copy that information over to the HUD and switch over to surface that gives me a more accurate measure of how far away I am because this measure is from the center of Phobos and this measure is from the surface Not too far away. Let's uh, go prograde Rotation. to Phobos so we can see it. And again, we'll do some rotation here to make sure all the movement is in the forward aft position. That way we can use the uh, retro engines to slow us down. Turn on the APU, open those retro doors, and while I'm doing that, I'll start burn time calculator and put in the DV. That's going to be 890. Let's call it 893. And it says that we can do that with the, let's change the engines. It says we can do that in 92 kilometers. So when we get to about 95 kilometers, uh, according to this number, then we'll start that burn. Alright, I don't believe I need TransX at this point. Let's go ahead and close that out. Just do a little bit of 10x to close the distance. We're getting in pretty close. Let's do any last minute corrections with the... Uh, vertical and lateral, although it's really close right as it is. <clears throat> That's good enough. 
double check the retro engines or retro doors, they are open. Okay, we're going to do this burn in just a few more seconds. And burning. By starting it at about 95, that should, in theory, give us an altitude of about 3 kilometers by the time we have the meters per second down to zero. Not the most realistic way to do this. I think it'd be a lot more realistic to uh, use the main engines. These retro engines strike me as being very fanciful. Getting the vertical and lateral as close to zero as possible. And we've got about 530 meters per second left to eliminate. And we got over here to Phobos much faster, uh, two hours and 46 minutes see how long it takes us to actually get down and land. It'll be easier to land this time because I have a base now thanks to uh, DGAT Souls or I'm not sure what his username is but I'll provide a link to his YouTube channel down in the uh, description below. He created this, created a base for me for Phobos. Uh, when it's completely tested and done I'll have it up on Orbit Hangar but a big thanks to him for doing that. I was actually trying to just make a landing pad on my own, and uh, once I got some information from the guys on Orbiter Forum, I was able to get the landing pad down, but it didn't really look great. But uh, he came into the forum and offered his assistance for creating an actual platform, and then that turned into a base, and it's, it's really nice. I really like the way it worked out. Okay, coming up toward the end of the burn here, we've only got about 120 meters <clears throat> per second left to eliminate. 5,000. We'll go with that. We'll leave ourselves with a little bit of uh, velocity heading toward Phobos there. That way we're continuing to sink. All right, let's get uh, started here and let's get ready to find our base. So we'll bring up map. And actually, I guess we don't really need map. Bring up ComNav and dial in the frequency for the base. And since I set this up to begin with, I know it's 129, yeah, and the that's the VOR, or the beacon, and then I'll set this to landing pad number one or two. Now this doesn't exist in orbiter by default, this, is, this base is available only through this add-on that isn't publicly available yet. landing pad number one. Now we'll bring up VOR VTOL and we actually have landing pad number one in range 
and we're only 24 kilometers away from it. So this all will make landing at Phobos a lot easier. So instead of, you know, using the uh, coordinate system, the you know, longitude and latitude, this will be easier. All right, let's uh, go level with Phobos. And I think I've also solved the problem with getting the vessel to settle down. Basically, you just need to make sure all your directions of movement are almost exactly zero. You won't get you won't get wheel stop until all the directions of movement are really close to zero. Three thousand. Translation. So now we got our base directly in front of us, and we're heading that way at 2.15 meters per second. That's relatively slow. Rotation. Can probably speed that up a Translation. little bit. Maybe about 10 meters a second. That's, uh, you know, Phobos is so small, you don't want to get in a big hurry. You just got to take your time and then use time acceleration. So we'll do that now, warping time ahead. Two thousand. Got to watch my altitude. Rotation. Translation. Warping time ahead a little bit. This can go a little faster. Let's see how things are coming along. Rotation. Translation. Okay. Rotation. Translation. Okay, gonna warp time ahead again. And I guess we're getting close to that point where the mesh extends up higher than the actual surface of Phobos. I guess I should actually make my altitude closer to three kilometers, I think, then I wouldn't ever run into that mesh problem. But I'm not going to change altitude now just for that purpose. So let's go ahead and continue forward to Phobos. Rotation. Or continue forward to the base. Translation. Just getting everything lined up. <clears throat> okay, we're still 15 kilometers out. Okay, back to real time. Rotation. Work on getting everything lined up again. Trans
Translation. Rotation. Translation. And bringing the vertical speed back down to zero. About right there. And there's actually where the base is at, but we're inside the mesh right now. So let's get out of that before we really worry about looking at the base. We're getting close to the edge of the mesh. Let's go back to real time and straighten things Rotation. out. Translation. time ahead. Okay, we're out of the mesh. Whoops. Wrong button. And we're only five and a half kilometers away from the base, so we'll be able to see it as soon as we come over this ledge here. Very nice. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Translation. makes for a much nicer target having that platform to land on. The main thing about having a platform is that when you touch down you the vessel appears to be flat and level with the uh, you know with Phobos whereas before if you remember in the first video or second video when I landed and picked up the fuel modules the vessel was partly on the ground and partly sunk into the mesh it's just really ugly really ruins the experience but this platform is just it's wonderful you'll see here in a moment rotation translation rotation Translation. Okay, adding in quite a bit of negative vertical speed here now because we do need to bring the altitude down. Rotation. Translation. Before I forget, I'm going to start the APU and lower the landing gear. Down. Gear down and locked. Rotation. So when we touch down on the landing pad, this horizontal speed needs to be 0.00. .00 close to zero. It can be, I found that it can be like 0 0.002 and you can still get wheel stop, but it really has to be almost perfectly 0 0.00. Translation. Rotation. And having this will let me know what my, what my horizontal speed is, whereas without having 
this instrument, it's more difficult to know whether or not you're perfectly still. And that's one of the reasons I couldn't get wheel stop, or I had such a hard time getting wheel stop in my other video. You are cleared to land. We're getting there. Very small body, almost no gravity, so it, things don't happen real quickly here. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. One thousand. Looks like I can pitch down a little bit because as I'm going forward, it's continuing to go up. Nine hundred. Eight hundred. Seven hundred. Okay, you're gonna have to start paying attention to things now. Much more closely, I mean. Six hundred. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Translation. Rotation. Two hundred. Translation. One hundred. Seventy-five. Fifty. Forty. Overshot the landing pad a little bit. Twenty. Fifteen. Rotation ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Wheels down. Wheel stop. Beautiful. So much easier with that platform and having the landing pad to give you, you know, correct information. Huge, huge thank you to the guy <clears throat> that made this uh, landing platform for me. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. And now we can load up our fuel and head on out to Jupiter. But I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And we'll pick it up in the next part. If you like this part of the video, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And we'll see you in the next part.